Again, if you like this, thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would absolutely appreciate you do that too. Just click that subscribe, click the little bell icon, and um, and you should be good. Um, just me trying to get through some emails. Hope this is good. Hope this was good. Alan, uh, Jason, Abdul, and uh, and Stefan. All right, let's get into uh, to modeling some stuff. That would be that would be good after twelve minutes here. Uh, next one here is from Ernie. Uh, Ernie writes, hey Lars, I have to machine the unequal bevel you showed me how to create. How can I do that without setting it up on an angle block? Thank you so much. Hey, Ernie, you're so very welcome. Let's look at that. So, um, talking about unequal bevels. Um, so, let's go in here and just draw something up. Ooh, this is good because there was a couple of people who were complaining about my, uh, my video last week. Um, where we were talking about uh, blending blending edges. So maybe this will help. So the way I showed Ernie um, to do this a while back was to create a new sketch on top here. And I'm just going to create an alpha line. I'm just going to draw a line. Doesn't, this is not important. Like that. One line there. That is one sketch. And then I opened up another sketch on a face here on the side and I placed a point. Just a single point wherever you want. Let's place it down here. Now I have an, a line and I have a point. And another way I could have done, I think it was last week where I did offset edges and people were complaining about not using loft. I could abso absolutely have used loft for that too. So just like that, I could have blended in edges. I was playing around with the filler tool using the offset in that, and I used a uh, sculpt face also. I'm just trying to show some different ways, but this is absolutely an unequal bevel, uh, and you can control all that you want. We could have gone back to this uh, point here. We could have dimensioned it if we wanted to have had a little bit more control over it. So let's make it 65, and, uh, and everything will update with that. How do we machine it, Bernie? Well, with this created, we can go into manufacturing. Uh, let's go and do a cam setup. Make sure you got the Z axis being right. And uh, if you want to machine this without uh, have to set it up in a weird angle, the easiest thing would probably be to use a ball end mill. And for that, I would use a, uh, a contour toolpath. The contour toolpath, 3D contour toolpath with a ball end mill is really good at steep angles. Parallel is really good at, at flat angles. So think about it like that. If you were doing, like, if it was water, then I will do a, uh, a parallel. If it's a contour, I'll do like a steep, steep down. So when I select the contour, uh, let's go and select an end mill. Go to metric. Let's select the three millimeter ball end mill here, maybe a six millimeter ball end mill. Hit okay. Can see that show up there. And what I recommend people doing is that whenever you are doing 3D cam, just select the tool, don't do anything else. Hit OK and see what the software gives you. So assuring that you're not selecting all different kinds of things when you go back in. And this actually looks pretty dang good. So what we get if we simulate this is um, you will see red collisions because I didn't rough out this is meant as a circ as a finishing tool path but what you're seeing here um ernie is kind of the tool just machining down those faces step by step by step by step by step that would probably be the easiest way to um to machine this i think so that would be be my recommendation to do that um i hope this was useful ernie um utilizing and most CNC machines can do free access, right? So uh, it's just kind of like positioning down with the Z axis and going machining down all the way there. All right. Haha. <laughs> Hope that was useful, Ernie. I am overexposing. The light is just going through. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one. The next